Is this a routine you do, or is this just how you remember it? And what's the it's how I remember it. Most, most people aren't familiar with my experience in gaming. I mean, you have people like David Arneson, David Wesley, David McGarry, Dan Nicholson, Gary Gigax. They're all famous. People know about them. They've been all over. Randy Hoffa. Um, these are all people I know except Gigax. I met him maybe twice. The rest of them, these were friends of mine who made a name in gaming. I never did. I mean, no one's ever heard of me. You know, no one ever asked me about any of this stuff because they don't realize what's going on. Occasionally something comes up where I'll mention it and they're, oh yeah, really? You were part of that? And yeah, because usually what I tell them is, well, you know, the game was invented here in St. Paul by a guy that's a friend of mine. Oh yeah? He said, yeah, and you know, I was gaming with him. Oh, so you were part of that. But otherwise, no one ever talks to me about it. No one ever asks any questions about it. So no one knows any of my stories. And I didn't even realize just how much I was part of this whole story. Because I kept having the impression that this is all stuff which has happened over a long period of time before I joined the group. It's only when I looked at it later and was talking to guys and looking things up on the internet that I realized that, gee, I was almost there right from the beginning. I mean, you look at Fight in the Skies, you know, oh, wow, that's been around a long time. It was, it comes from the Blue Max. Great movie. Love that movie. 1966. I was a member, I mean, I knew these guys 1968, 1969. So the game was invented just before I joined. I was playing it along with original players. And same with Blackmore, the Napoleonics. That hadn't been going on for all that long before I joined the group. You know, some of these people I had never even heard of. They had come and gone already, like Greg Scott. So I thought, oh, this has all been going on for a long time, and it's only later that I found out that, gee, you know, I was kind of a junior member of that time, but I'm really a senior member of the group compared to all the people that joined afterwards, and I always thought I was young because I was a junior member. There was a Civil War campaign. Now, I think David Wesley ran that. I'm not sure. It was in conjunction with another group of gamers that I think were Gary Gigax's gamers because they had the East Coast, they had the area around Washington, D.C. and that, and we were the guys in the West, the ones around the Mississippi. And David Arneson loved that because, naval enthusiast, he was the Confederate naval commander. And you talk inventive. Now I was General Polk. General Leonidas Polk, the Bishop General. He was the westernmost Confederate general that wasn't actually across the river. I mean, you had Sterling and Price and those guys, and they were kind of a sideshow. I don't think we even gamed with those in the game, the campaign. And David came up with all these great ideas on what he was going to do. I mean, you give him full scope with basically a blank page, which is what the Confederate River Navy was, with all these different things to use, and we kicked butt. I mean, it was cool. I mean, we knew we were going to be steamrollered, but I mean, talk personalities. The guys on the Northern team, like Steve Rockford and Fred Funk, they're methodical, very methodical. And then you have guys like me, Mr. Aggression, you have people like David, very inventive, and some of the other guys. So David, you know, first thing I did was to bypass all their forts and to go in behind. And this really threw them off because they were going to do it the right way this time. They were going to train, they were going to get experience, and then run over us. Well, we didn't give them time for it. Keep them off balance. David came to me and said, Bob, I got a great idea. I got a bunch of ships, wooden ships. They're not ironclads, but they're building some ironclads up in Cairo, Illinois. I think that we can do something about that. If you want to lend us a thousand guys, or I think it was 2,000 guys. Now, this was a big deal because I only had like 5,000 troops under my command. 
and he wanted this many people, what was my answer? Okay, go to it. Because I knew he was going to do far more to them and to help me than I could possibly do myself, and he did. He went up there and he created havoc behind their lines. He burned the shipyards. He took some of their ships and brought them back down with. I mean, gaming with these guys was just fantastic. It really was. David was the game master, if you will, on the Napoleonics game, and he had a real problem. Napoleonics. This is very well documented in history, very well, right down to what the people were wearing. I mean, their belt buckles, the colors, their uniforms, everything, and it was all colorful. Different units, you had lancers, you had ulans, you, which are lancers, you had dragoons, you had infantry, you had grenadiers, the whole thing. And anyone could look it up, and they did. And so he was constantly being bombarded by people saying, my unit can do this, because it did it historically. Well, you know, we have this rule. Yeah, but I can do this. And usually they'll spring it on him in the middle of a battle, which is a very bad thing to do because it kind of brings the whole thing to a stop. As a matter of fact, there's a very famous thing Greg Scott did that I've heard many times from many different people and that is that he charged with cavalry and they went over a ditch and David told him you can't do that and Greg said but I predicated my entire attack on this well David got tired of all that really tired of it and he probably already had a germ of an idea in him of course we had already done Brownstein we had already done Corns um, so he was thinking, why don't I come up with something you can't look up history on? I mean, who's going to say what a troll can do? Who's going to say what a magic user can do? You know, so this, I'm sure, was an impetus for him to come up with Blackmore. As a matter of fact, when we first played Blackmore, none of the players had a set of rules. David had it, and that was it. Now you learned as you went along, you know. You, you aren't here, and then suddenly you can run to the other end of the board. You know, so we kind of figured out. We were all experienced gamers. We knew what we could do pretty much. But as far as the actual rules go, David knew them. And we had to learn the hard way, just like you do in real life. If it's a troll, you run away unless you're a superhero. It's that simple. You know, it's a dragon? Okay, we're le as a matter of fact, there was a famous adventure we did where we were down there, we came up to a door, there's orcs and everything, and a Belrog showed up. Boy, I tell you, you talk about an expedition scattering. Important to learn, and this is what David had. We loved it when they published D&D, &D, because finally we had our own set of rules. And it didn't really help for us to go to David. You know, David, it says this right here. He would just look at us and laugh. <laughs>